Olá, mochileiros, eu estou aqui com o Mike Kyo. Ele participou da série de TV do Guia e vocês vão saber um pouco sobre os bastidores e como foi que ele, como foi a participação dele na série. Hello, uh, my name is Mike Kyo. I'm an actor. I was in the Shadow's Guide to the Galaxy TV series. I played the Vogon Guard. Resistance is useless. <laughs> I don't know why, that always works. <laughs> um, and I've been in the stage production at the Rainbow before that, which is how I got into it in the first place. And I've been in various bits and pieces of hitchhiker related things ever since, uh, uh, squeezing out my five minutes of fame to about uh, two months by now. Um, I, uh, I'm still an actor, I, I've been in other things. Um, Nightmare is another good fanish thing that I was in. And I had my head explode in Max Headroom. <laughs> I've, I've exploded several times. I, I did put it on my CV. Do you have a good question? Uh, how was the experience working with well, the characters? It was great fun. I got to do a lot of stuff. I was in the, uh, the Rainbow Stage show, which we talked about here. Which was the great, I call it the great disaster of 1980, but I was being a little unfair. It was artistically, it was quite good, and it was certainly an amazing spectacle, but unfortunately, um, it wasn't a very good business investment from anybody concerned. And the producers are supposed to have fled to South America. Um, I think that's only rumour. You, you can probably cut that bit out if it turns out to be slanderous. But, but we never ever, ever saw them again, or saw most of the money we were allegedly owed. As a result of that, because there were people hanging around who were going to be working on the TV series, Kevin Davis, especially who worked on the animations and special effects, uh, I went, I managed to get myself a part of the, of the Vogon Guard in episode two. I really, really wanted the Vogon captain because he's got much better lines, but he'd already been cast and had been, they'd, they'd made the first episode of the TV series before the stage show happened. So I said, that if the part of the Vogon Guard is going in episode two, fine by me, I'll take it. And that was very nice. Um, I think it's a funny little part, and I think I did it well. Uh, I, I was pleased when the director called me back and said, Michael, we've got this part in episode five, the bodyguard, would you like to play it? And I said, oh, oh, I think I can be free that week. I, I, have the, I, I think I might have a gap in my diary. And unfortunately, my appendix went and exploded a week beforehand. So they went and got Dave Prowse to do it instead, in what was Darth Vader. I'm not, not I'm bitter and twisted about that all these years later. But as I said, I've ended up doing various odds and sods. They had me uh, repeat my Vogon Guard for one of the uh, later radio episodes that Dirk managed to put together. The illustrated Hitchhiker's Guide as Mr. Prosser with a very unfortunate moustache. It was 1980s. If you look at that moustache now, please remember it was the 1980s. And we did not know any better than to wear mark moustaches like that. Anyway, I, I, I hang around. I'm a science fiction fan anyway. Uh, they pressured me in, 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 uh, at the last the one Easter con, but uh, the bridge science fiction big convention always happens at Easter. They went, came up to me and said, Michael, come to this convention, we'll give you a drink if we, if we, if we do it. I said, oh, go on, go on, I suppose. And uh, because I'm a big softy, I agreed to do it. And that's about my story. Did you have anything else? I, what else can I tell you? You said that you are a science fiction fan, right? Yeah. I have been from a, for a long time. I was, I was at Oxford. And I was part of the SF group there. Right. Jeffrey Perkins, who, uh, who produced the radio series at Oxford, which is how I knew about uh, about the Shaker's Guide to the Galaxy. It was something he was working on, and uh, I thought, well, I'll have a listen to that. But I've been a fan for a long time. I went to my first convention in 1979, which was the 1979 World Easter Worldcon in England at Brighton. I did it off the back of my first television part. Uh, I went there and got very drunk. 
those of you who are young and innocent science fiction fans out there, do not go to room parties with Scandinavians. <laughs> or if you do, stay away from the Aquavit. <laughs> Because, yeah, this is this is wisdom. I am I'm, I'm an old and aging fan. I'm giving you wisdom. If you do, stay away from the upbeat because if you do that, like me, in Brighton in 1979, you may find yourself underneath a table at three o'clock in the morning, being thrown out by the hotel staff. I'm past that stage now, mostly. And and anyway, yes, I am a science fiction fan, and I um, go to conventions and uh, do silly things that science fiction fans do. I was sort of sad that I never got to be in any of the big, apart from the glorious Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy itself, of course, and I got, never got to be in any of the big TV series. But hey, Brazil, start a writing campaign. Yeah. <laughs> it's a good thing. Save my tradition. career, Brazil. All right. He could be. The, he could. I have could be big book. in Brazil. You have a good voice to be the book. Excuse me. Yes. Yes. You are not wrong. Am I going to disagree with a beautiful woman? Exactly <laughs> no. Oh, come on, you have an amazing voice. I know, but it's a bit of a burden and a bit of... If people identify you for only one thing, they think that's the only thing you can do. And, hey, my voice is, in point of fact, one of the wonders of the 20th and 21st centuries, but I can't take any credit for it. It's all natural. And so... Um, do so I, have to I just train, uh, no, no, it came, it came, it came fairly naturally. <laughs> well, somebody gave me some good advice about breathing from the abdomen when I was about 18, and I followed it ever since. And I, I like to think I, I can do good things with my voice, but uh, yeah, at the moment I have very few voiceover credits. I did some redubbing of anime for Japanese, but my best line was "Land Rover Attack." <laughs> It, I mean, it wasn't Shakespeare, was it? <laughs> but it's good, isn't it? Well, it was a great Land Rover attack. I gave good Land Rover attack. Apparently, apparently this is a thing they say in Japanese films. Something or other, attack! <laughs> and, and it's, uh, it's a strong, uh, in a strong way. A strong, a vital, aggressive, masculine <laughs> way, I like to think. But, and last thing, it's hard for everybody to say it, but do you have a favorite quote besides your life? Besides, besides <laughs> my life? Yeah. Oh, well, ah, <laughs> this requires me to think differently from the way I normally <laughs> I normally do. It's already hard for people who is only a fan. I imagine people who work closely with friends. All right, hang on. <laughs> Don't pay no attention. Let me try this one. It is perhaps a little nasty. One of the things Ford Prefect had always found hardest to understand about humans was their habit of continually stating and restating the very, very obvious, as in, it's a nice day, or you're very tall, or dear me, you seem to have fallen down a 30 foot well, are you all right? At first, Ford had formed a theory to account for this strange behavior. If human beings don't keep exercising their lips, he thought, their mouths probably seize up. After a few months consideration and observation, he abandoned this theory in favor of a new one. If they don't keep exercising their lips, he thought, their brains start working. After a while, he abandoned this one as well, as being obstructively cynical. Yeah, that's a nice <laughs> See, it's the book. <laughs> thank you so much, You're Mike. welcome. Okay. It was really nice to meet you. And I, I think that Brazilian hitchhikers will love to see you. Send a message to Brazil. Yeah, send a message to Brazilian I don't have it. I don't have the Portuguese. I'm guessing it's Portuguese. Yeah. I don't have the Portuguese, so I cannot say, but hey, I'll do Bro Brother Mace instead. Uh, my name is uh, Brother Mace. My friend here is, uh, well, he doesn't speak very much, and uh, anyway, I only met him five minutes ago. Benedicite, Brazil, a general blessing fall upon you from the heavens by the beard of Saint Uncumber. Mm, yeah, good day. I love it. <laughs> Thank you so much. You're